Hi everyone, after these um, videos of live blitz, it's time to continue my amazing career story. So where did we leave off? Well, I left off after Bradford, so after getting beaten up in another major, it wasn't um, a long play tournament for a while, it was just um, back to play matches for club three C's. And the week after there was actually um, the under 18 county championships in Telford, which I just about sneaked into by a month. And I restored a bit of pride there in the rapid play time controls with 45 minutes each where um, with a new very aggressive opening repertoire I hacked three players up before losing the last one because I played the Traxler which is a bit stupid. <laughs> well round one I hacked someone up with Scotch Gambit to play 1e4. Game two I played the um, King's Indian instead of Nimzo Indian for a bit of hacking and, um, and then again completely smashed the one to eight up with a dangerous pawn sacrifice and d6 then just hacked his king to shreds against the classical although um, I was a bit lucky. Round 3 I was very lucky um, I was getting smashed by the dragon Sicilian because my opponent did some sneaky trick of leaving the king at centre for ages but when um, <laughs> all of a sudden I went g4 and then I, I sacrificed like two pawns I did and she like missed the force win she'd done to try and get my attack in I just got my queen of rook and the mate of her so my big, biggest swindle ever against the 149 and then um, I played some proper strong and um, played the track so and they somehow knew all the theory and I was rooked out for nothing soon and soon had to resign. So I got three out of four and restored a lot of respectability. But that was rapid and now um, hopefully I could improve in long play after crucifying and grade even more at the last tournament. My first match of the season has actually already been annotated and it was actually a 24 move win. <laughs> but it only gets to 116 which is going to be a found um, Tim Milton versus Jeremy Peach, if you want to check it out. Our next game was again, actually against um, Epic Chess CEO, aka Tim C in 3Cs versus Ashton. That video will probably be annotated like when we like meet up or something at a tournament. We'll do it then like a joint commentary, like we did last time. So the match after that um, was um, 3Cs3 versus Eccles1, played on 19th of October. And I was black against Chris Lysons, 115 ETF. So I'm playing someone like 26 points lower than me. And um, I've never put anyone this low for ages to be honest. Not since being up a couple of passes in Summer League for Ashton. With the videos of them can be found um, further back. And we was um, favourites for this match. I was actually, this is actually board 2 in this. Both teams were drastically weakened. I'm usually about board 4 and my opponent's usually about that as well. So we have been playing each on board 4 usually, something like that. But we was expected to win and I was expected to win. And uh and now my debut with King's Indian at long play you are going to see. So he plays um D four and after knight f six, c four, g six, knight c three, bishop g seven, e four, d six. The line he chose was my pet line against <laughs> the King's Indian, the Siamish. So um that wasn't nice to be facing. Just to explain it briefly, um F three uh, makes the centre stronger, like protecting E four. And um, prepares a hack attack maybe with bishop e3, queen d2, and h4, h5. But the there's a few disadvantages. Jason, for example, um, Edward Goodfield said, ask the g1 knight what it thinks of the Simish because it can't come to its best square f3 because pawns there. Also, the um, f1 bishop's a bit bad and there's a bit of a traffic jam sort of caused. And also, um, there's not much peace development to code and uh, it weakens the dark squares. And there's plenty of tactics where black wins the table with queen h4 checks and Knight takes e4 sacrifices, so you've got to be careful. But overall, it's a very aggressive line, this. I was prepared to be hacked up, perhaps, by 115, which would be pretty embarrassing. Uh, Castled, and now he plays bishop g5, which isn't the main move. The point being is that it stops e5, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and the bishop's more aggressive on the square, but it's also subject to some tempo winning attacks. The main move is bishop e3, and then black has three choices. One is the standard King's Indian counterpunch with e5, and I have to say, knight if d5, then black can play c6, r, knight h5, trying to take advantage of diagonal and getting into f4. So knight g2 perhaps, and then black could play e takes d4, but after knight takes d4, I don't think this is brilliant because white's got like a very big space advantage with this like Roxy Bind style pawn structure, the big grip on d5, and e4 is well protected by f3 and black could be suffocated if he isn't careful but black does have counter play or knight bd7 say queen d2 and then a6 a movie seeing a lot of simish is preparing b5 because white castle is long in a lot of them 
because it's hard to develop your kingside pieces in a Siamish. And also you want to hack attack them on kingside, so castle and queenside is like sensible. So um, e5 actually, I don't think e5 is actually quite as good against the Siamish as it is against the classical. I think because white center is more stable. Is that, but the thing the move that's been put in the same which I have a fashion a lot is um, c5 a gambit and it's generally guarded that knight g2 can lead to inferior Benoni positions so the critical test is to accept the gambit because the best way to refute gambit is to accept it but this gambit is certainly can't be refuted because after d takes c5 d takes queens come off bishop takes c5 knight c6 black's got a big grip on d4 an open d file and his king's indian bishop is very like powerful and this provides like practically enough compensation for a pawn and white has to be careful he doesn't get hacked. So that's um and also uh, another good line is the um, panel variation with knight c six exclamation mark question mark. So um let's say if um, knight g two and then and then black's rooks like come to e eight and b eight and like b five gets played like say knight g two, rook e eight, queen d two, a six and black gets a good counter play in this line. So anyway, um, that's just a brief um, taste of the all the theory in the Siamish. It's good books in it, like the controversial Siamish by um, Chris Ward is what I used to study. And um, that's a good book, I recommend purchasing it. And he also talks about bishop g5. And now black can't play e5 because of um, the tactic d takes c5, d takes c5, queens come off and then knight d5 wins pawn on c7 because there's two threats to the knight and the knight can't be taken because it's pinned to the rook. So c7 drops and white's better. I play h6 which is trying to win a tempo on bishop but it does expose them a weakness that can be attacked by a bishop on e3 and a queen on d2. Maybe it's better to play like knight c6 to try and get some panel style counter play with queen d2, rook b8. H6, and now bishop comes back to e3, and I play e5 now because I can play it now. The bishop's off because it's trading queens off, and that um, is harmless. Say d takes e5, d takes, queens come off, and this is pretty harmless. This maybe even better for black with d line pressure. It's where white can't castle long. He plays d5, closed off the center, and he's showing a big space advantage by these pawns that are highlighted in yellow. And now I play a5, which is a typical King's Indian move, securing the c5 square for a knight, because the a5 pawn stops b4, but this is generally considered too slow in Siamish, because it's a lot more sharper and tactical. Uh, another typical Siamish move is, is c6, which guarantees that black will get an open file towards uh, white's king if white castles um, long. So, d takes c6 in this position is a mistake, because if b takes c6, and d5 is protected, and black's got a big pawn center. So, so queen d2, threatening h6 or h5. And now d takes c6 is good because what black actually can't take with a b pawn because the um, ice, the backward d6 pawn haunts him after castles long. The only way to defend is 98. Now c5 wins the pawn due to the pin on queen. So black actually has to take with a knight. And now the d6 pawn is backward and a target on a semi open file. So castle's long, threatens it, um, and um, and black's maybe in a bit of trouble here. However, a good move is simply just knight a6, um, just developing pieces. Queen d2, h5, castle long, and knight c5. And you don't really need to play a5 actually, because if white does kick you away with b4, he's weakening the, uh, his king quite a lot. And black's fine here. D5, A5, the slow move, Queen D2, and now I play the um, Knight H7, which is a bit of a dodgy move. I mean, it prepares F5 and um, sets a trap, but this isn't that brilliant. I could actually have played Knight A6. I mean, I'm quite, I was quite new to King's Indian, so I was, I didn't really understand. Like, I, I couldn't feel the dynamics you need to play it, and um, I didn't know that like, Bishop takes A6 is in fact a bad blunder. Because um, of the tactical shot, if you want to try and spot it, please stop the video now. Knight takes e4, taking advantage of the move f3, where it weakens the diagonal. And white's best is to take the knight because the queen's also attacked. And after queen h4 check, g3, 
Queen takes h6. Although it's equal material, white's pawn centre has been destroyed and black's already much better. So instead of taking, white should castle long. And after knight c5, um, a very sharp pawn sacrifice for bishop takes h6. And now you ram the a pawn down white's throat with a4. With some attacking chances in return for pawn. Instead I play knight h7 and of course um, the pawn is immune because of check winning the um, bishop. An interesting option is to play um, c5 going for a typical king's Indian hack attack on queen side where um, because d6 is like the place where you undermine to try and open lines up in queen side. So say I break with f5, another typical of king's Indian break like white's is c5, black's is f5 and then the best is e takes f5, g takes f5, c takes CD, rook C1, with C line pressure, now F4 winning the 10 point bishop, bishop F2 and knight A6, with an unclear position has arisen. But however, I'd actually prefer black in this position, but both kings are going to be exposed. It looks like, well, white's going to find it hard to develop his own king's side, and he can't go queen's side, and black's king's are bit exposed. So it paves way for a very interesting struggle, but black's superior development may give him a slight advantage. But it's your call in this position. He goes for the um, hack attack with h4, so he's trying to hack me up despite being a lot lower graded. I play h5, blocking it off. And now bishop e2, bit of a passive move. I think he should have castled long straight away. After um, bishop d7, he has two options. One is to play a quiet consolidating move, king b1, because it's a good idea to play king b1 or king b8 if you're black, black after castling long. However, there is a very interesting option of sacrificing the pawn with um, g4, exclamation mark, question mark, black should take, and now you don't take it back, you go h5, try to rip open lines towards the black king as fast as possible, again black should take, and after rook takes h5, white has got some dangerous losses and pressure on the um, queen side, king side, now g, g takes f3, now white's best move is given as a quiet move, rook h1, preparing queen h2, and a quick finish perhaps, Knight takes f3 isn't as good because bishop g4 is awkward and in fact rook takes h7 is best. King takes h7, bishop e2, takes, takes, rook h8 and rook g1. And white's it a sacrifice and exchange and a pawn for a dangerous attack. And the engine's assessors is dead equal so maybe it peaks out into a draw after a few moves like probably perpetual or something. But black's going to have a hard time fighting off white's attack and white's going to be much easier to play. Well, if white messes it up, then black's exchanging the pawn ahead, but it's equal, so that's does. An interesting position to maybe have a play along with. So, rook h1, preparing queen h2. Bishop g4, queen h2. The only move to stop white winning is knight f6, and now queen g3, winning the pawn back, and um, black's going to have to defend very carefully in this position, despite the extra pawn. And this was a good option for white. You see when black um, blocks up with h5 in these like 150 attack style positions, a good technique for white to rip up and land to play g4 sacrificing that pawn, and then playing h5. And I did that actually in um, the under 18 county round 3, that's how I won the game with one of them sacrifices, because I was getting hacked on the queen side. So he plays bishop e2, he's not making his mind the way he wants to castle here, because he could play knight h3 and castle short, but that's unlikely. I was expecting him to castle long. Because it's a typical Simish theme. So, and, and uh, by this point, I certainly wasn't underestimating him. Because I've got not the best position, to be honest. I play knight a6. And then we finally play the dodgy, typical low graded mo move. Because he commits himself to giving up um, his bishop for the knight and c5 by playing um, a3. And this also weakens his queen side if he wants to castle there. So, this was um, pretty nice. I think he should have just castled long. Knight c5 and then gone knight h3, developing the um, last piece into the game. And I still haven't developed my um, bishop or queen. And he's castled as well and everything. So bishop d7 and now knight f2, preferring um, g4. And it's going to be a bit of a hack attack from both sides now, where black's going to try and hack white up on queen side, possibly with a, a well timed b5 pawn sack. And White's going to try and play g4 and then g takes h5 and bring it up to g line and bishop h6, etc. But White's chances look better in the hack attack. 
Instead he plays a3. Maybe he's worried of knight b4, but that weakens the b3 square. Um, and after knight c5, he's basically committed to giving his bishop up because I'm threatening like knight b3 winning the exchange. And he's weakened b3 badly. And bishop takes c5, d takes c5 is very double edged. Black has a black's g7 bishop is actually unopposed now. So if I can rip the open, then white's going to be in big trouble. I've also got the bishop pair, uh, it's quite a block of position, but there's plenty of pawn breaks to open it, and over the course of the next few moves, I'm trying my best to open position up as much as possible. But, but I've got doubled c pawns in return, and white's got a dangerous potential pass pawn on d5 if I play um, c6, something, and take. And also, white's got a space advantage as well, still. But at least I'm not going to get hacked now, so I'm quite happy. I've also got a bind on b4 as well. And now um, I think he should have castled long. Um, I'd have played bishop d7, now queen e3, b6, and king b1. It was an interesting struggle for both sides. Instead, he plays g3, another dodgy looking knees. Not sure what the point was. Um, and I brought with f5, which is really risky because I've not really, my army isn't coordinated enough. Like, my knight's out of the game, and so is my bishop in development. Whereas White's um but White's a bit backward in development as well. But this is quite a risky move, but I just wanted to open the position up and hopefully it, it might take him and I can like rip the diagonal open. And my bishop was very strong then. My unopposed bishop as well. A safer move was knight f six, bringing the knight back into the game. And then White can either play knight h three or can castle long. Also, f5 weakens g5 permanently, and you can see a, a knight can easily get there with knight h3 to g5. And now white castled long, which is the best move, and keeps a small advantage. Another alternative was to take, and up for if rook takes f5 isn't great because of bishop d3, rook f6 and castles long. And white's going to get a dangerous cushion attack if I'm not careful. So, um... Bishop takes f5 is um, safer. Also takes advantage of a diagonal point right towards white's king after castles. Queen d7. Bishop d3. Knight f6 takes. Takes. Then knight b5. And then knight knight e8. And black's equalised maybe slightly better. There's pressure on the f3 pawn as well. And the black can play e4 and like rip up a diagonal. I quite fancy black in this position. Bishop takes f5 is the best capture. G takes f5 is interesting, but maybe not that great. Uh, it's castles and f4. Bishop d3. And now you see black's king is getting very open. After f takes g3, queen g2. And again, black's going to have to be very careful, and it's too risky taking with g pawn. I think bishop takes f5 gives black a safe position with a small advantage. But he doesn't do that, he plays the right move and castles long. Now I play knight f6, getting the knight back into the game, and trying to apply some pressure to e4. And now he plays bishop d3. Another alternative was to bring the knight into the game with knight h3, and then for the weak square on g5, which is no longer protected, and also maybe chances to come into e6, which should be pretty dangerous, and force back to give up a um, light square bishop, which is a good one. Bishop d3. And now I played a4. I was trying to clamp down on b3 and stop white playing a4 himself, so and I was prepared to have a pawn roller with c6 and b5 perhaps. And now white can't play a4 to block b5 up permanently. So I wanted to get some attack going before I get crushed on king side. Because I mean, I'm only losing loads of grading points, and imagine how disastrous losing to 115 would be. Um, it's a4. Um, So um, an alternative was c6, and after d takes c6, b takes c6, e takes is best now, bishop takes, everything comes off. But now comes the move rook d6, and black's in trouble because his pawn structure is strict, is um, drastically being compromised, and pawn's probably going to drop off. Could have played um, f takes e4, the best we capture according to entrance is with the bishop. Knight takes, knight takes, and now I've got two bishops against two knights, but it's not a very bishop friendly position. This, and as long as his knight stays on um, e4, I can never like liberate my um, one of my extra bishops. Say so bishop f5, 
queen e3, b6, knight e2, and the knight pair is better than the bishop pair in this position. But white has to be careful not to open it up or he will be stuffed. I played a4, and now queen e3. Maybe developing last piece with knight g2 is better. Queen e3. And I was worried that he's threatening queen takes c5, but he's also threatening e takes f5, followed by queen takes a, e5, but that's an empty threat. But because I'm not used to it, kings indeed dynamics, I, don't, I didn't really see it. So I could safely have protected the pawn with b6 or something. And if ef, gf, queen takes e5, the move that actually loses the game for white is not actually, there's actually no good discoveries, that's the thing. However, there is, of course, bishop h6 check. King b1 and rook e8 traps white's queen right in the centre. Because I had thought that there wasn't really any dis good discoveries with the bishop, but there's always this, but I'd failed to calculate that. Also possible was f takes e4, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, b5. And then um, I've got two pawns on three, but lines towards white's king might start opening up. And if, again, if white ever moves his piece from e4 with bishop takes g6, then. So e4 and black could be loads of pawns behind, but white's king will start to get hacked. I mean, look how many pawns from pre in this position, but it's only giving us a slight advantage to white because there's plenty of dynam dynamism for black. Why well, play awful move knight d7 just protected both pawns, but locking my bishop in and cutting the protection of f5 off. So if white just sees this chance and played ef, I can't take it with bishop now, so I have to play gf. Now knight h3. And my king is dangerously open. But he just put, finishes his development at move 18 finally. Because when you play Simish, you usually don't finish your development for about 20 moves. Because of all these pawn moves. I mean, white's moved every pawn except the B pawn. Which you can't move. C6, another risky move. Open it in position that went behind in development. But I've got the bishop burst, so it won't be too bad. And again, um. E F G F and King B one is the way to go, and now the the king's off any like checks on G five that may arise on H six, and now White can have to free and to continue his attack with some good old hacking. Instead, he plays an awful move, Queen G five, because White's got the you should keep the Queen somewhere you've got the better attacking chances which White has, and also when I take him off, I double White's pawns. And after queen takes g5 check, h takes g5. Now I can see where it's coming from. I wish my knight had cut off f6. That pawn's very cramping. And his rook's now got an open, half open h line. So I, I can see where it's coming from. But it's just not a good move. To be honest. It's just like it goes from plus 0 0.7 to now minus 0 0.2. So black's at least equal if not better. And now a strong move would have been f4. Trying to rip up, right, friendly f takes g3, rook takes f3, he didn't do anything. So the best move I'd be to defend the f3 pawn, like a horrible passive move, and after f takes, knight takes, knight b6, black's fine. And white could be even worse and play gf. And now after ef, no, I've got, I've cleared the e5 square for a knight, and my bishop's like, ripping down that diagonal. So this would be really good for black, say rook df1 and knight e5, trying this position for black. It's also come with, come with tempo as well. But I actually played C takes D5. Just thinking of undoubling my pawns. So I was only thinking of pawn structure. But this is, and I thought now um, Bishop Perrin, he's got double pawns. But I failed to assess the other dynamics in the position. And in fact, he didn't play the strongest move, thankfully. He should have played um, E takes F5. Where G takes F5, Knight takes D5. Because White a tremendous position with Rook takes H5. But it's going impossible to stop. So I had to I try and mix up with e4, open it diagonal for bishop, but after f takes e4 and then giving up my wonderful extra bishop where bishop takes c3 is best. But there's no way to play that, I mean it's just too awful to contemplate. Knight takes c3, d4, knight d5, knight e5 and black's really a pawn down for nothing. And this would be big trouble. But the game um, after knight takes e5, d5, white's now got an octopus knight all of a sudden and the knight's like, Attacking all these key squares, and these other knight can come to c3 and support it. And there's all sorts of nasty friend. And now, um, the best move was to actually throw when the pawn in the midterm for some dynamism with f4. 
and if White accepts the pawn, which is his best option with these moves, I've got the same dynamic positions as in a couple of moves ago in that line I showed, but I'm down the pawn, but at least I have a playable position. See, F line pressure as well, some meat going. And there is some pressure in return for the pawn. Maybe not enough, but there is some. And a 150 might crack under pressure. However, I blundered with f takes e4. And after bishop takes e4, I am lost now all of a sudden. The reason is is that the g6 pawn is threatened, but there's also a threat of knight e7 takes g6 as well. And there's also pins on there. If I play king e7, then rook takes h5 wins on the spot. So the only move was king f7, which um, stops knight e7 check on takes the pawn. I opponent missed um, a force win. Um, if you want to try and spot it, please stop the video now. Well, um, he could have gone knight c7, attacking the rook, rook b8, and now a decisive infiltration with rook b6, c6, and g6 can't be defended, so say rook h8 takes, check, if I go to f8 then I'm mated in 1, if I go to d8 then we have knight b5, rook, and that, and it's just, I'm 2 pawns behind me, I'm absolutely getting smashed to pieces, this will be resigns. Instead he uses the concept of maintaining the tension, but rather than plus 3.7, it's only plus 2 with knight ec3. But of course his plan is knight b5, knight c7 and win. I play rook h8, protecting the h5 pawn in case of any tactics against it. Now his knight comes into b5. And I lose the game and everything in one move and my grade and everything in one move with knight f8. But even after the stronger bishop f8, if you see in this position, um, Look how much pressure White's got. All his pieces are absolutely ideally placed. I mean, they're all poorly placed. And I've got weaknesses everywhere. So, something's going to drop off inevitably. But, Bishop F8 keeps my losses to a pawn. So, White can actually win a pawn with Knight DC7. Rook A5, and now my um, Bishop on C8 is overloaded. So, Bishop takes B7, wins a pawn. Because if I take it, then Rook takes D7 is crushing. So, Knight B6. Bishop takes C8, Knight takes C8, Rook H E1. And why is the pawn up with a very strong position? And this is practically lost as well. Look how prophetic my rooks are as well. I wouldn't like to play on in this. So at least I ended my misery in one move. After knight f8, there's just knight d6 check. And uh, another miniature to add to my collection. I've been smashed in 25 moves by a 115 ECF. Now how low can I get? This is like the low point this. And um, at this moment, my grade is dropping 10 points. And um, I found that it was a bit underrated, but I can't. It's just the worst that we played this. I can't believe how bad I played. Uh, and the reason I resigned is because if I go to um, e6, then I will lose a full rook. And if I go to g8, well, I just thought I'd lose a bishop on c8, but it's actually worse because king h7 and now rook takes h5. Bishop h6, knight e8, and rook takes h6 mates next move. So after uh, knight d6 check, I resigned. And this serves me right for playing the King's Indian, so I won't be playing that again for a long time. Especially seeing as um, I got smashed by Simish by Swan 26 points low rated. And this completely crucified my grade even more. And uh, next time I'll continue my adventures. Just to finish on uh, a high, the next match I played um, was six days later. Um, just go back to start position. Yeah, I played um, a match um, eight days later. The last match had been 17 against Tony Need of 1 2 1 ECF. And it started off, I went e4 actually. He played e5. I went bishop c4, aiming for my um, US of Gambit, which after knight of 6, d4. He played knight takes e4, d takes c5, knight takes f2, the point being king takes f2, queen h4, winning bishop. But I had queen d5. For any mate, and then I took the knight next move, and I eventually won him a piece up. So that um got my grade back on track. And next time out, we'll see if I could um, build on that. But for now, I'm really sorry to show you this um absolutely um dreadful game. I'll just show you from White's point of view the final position. So I'm sorry to show you that dreadful game. Lost to a low rated.
I'll keep my head up, and this was a long time ago in October. But for now, um, I hope you enjoyed the um, return of this. Um, please subscribe to the channel. I've noticed I've not really been getting any subscribers recently. I've even been losing a few. Please subscribe, it means a lot to me. Also, please like the Facebook page, epichess.co.uk. Follow us on Twitter. And please visit the um, Cafe on Chess Cube, Epic Chess. But for now, I'm better finish this video now. And uh, another miniature. <laughs> and um, please leave any comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.